Hello and good morning and welcome to not a canal, where have we left the boat? I know, it's there somewhere I think. <laughs> that is Marple Aqueduct. Remember, because we crossed over it when we came over last, last week. week and that's where we mud. We're still mud at the end of the aqueduct. But we thought we'd come down here just to give you a different perspective. It's lovely, isn't it? I've been trying to think of a way to get the word perspective into a vlog. There you go, I've done it. So that's Marple Aqueduct, and the train you can just hear in the background is on Marple Viaduct, which is just behind it. The aqueduct itself is 105 yards long, 8 feet wide, and the drop between the level of the canal and the River Goit, which runs underneath it, is 100 feet, <laughs> making it the highest canal aqueduct in England. Is it really? It really is. There's only one in the UK that's higher. Can you guess which one it is? Um, it's the Pogcasulte. Yay! And he pronounced it properly as well. And um, it's about a quarter higher again is the... Pogcasulte. Than the Marple Aqueduct. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite an old one, 1800-ish. And it's built from two different stones. The lower part is built from red sandstone, which is sourced from the nearby Hyde Bank Quarry. And the upper bit is made from white stone, and that comes from Chapel Milton, which is not far that way, actually, to be honest. And if you look up near the big roundy things and round the arches, you can see some kind of metal straps that looks like it's holding the top of the aqueduct together. And they were put in in the 1860s because there was a really hard frost and some water had been leaking from the trough into the stonework and it froze and it blew out part of the aqueduct. Really? Blew it out. <laughs> Nothing like a good blowout. Nope. <laughs> so, fudge bucket. Uh, it's your turn to clean it. So, uh, so they got some chaps in to put these uh, big metal ties in and that secured the aqueduct. And I still want to play in the holes. <laughs> no, I do, I want to play. But it makes me hands sweat when I think about how to get in them, because you you'd can't. you have to abseil. You'd never get up there. Or like a really big ladder. <laughs> uh, but I'd like to play in one. Uh, weird story, you don't know about this. I don't so, know about lots of things. Back in the days, back in the early 19th century, when the canals were really busy, and of course they used to use horses to pull the boats. Yes. And they used to work the horses literally to death. They'd die in harness, that was what That's it was true, called. yes. And because they didn't want to pay the knacker's yard to, to, to come and take the horses away, they disposed of the horses themselves. And just down here in these woods is one of the old burial grounds for the canal boat horses. And there'd be dozens of horses buried in the woods around the aqueduct. I didn't know that. But boatmen, always kind of on the watch out for a, a little bit of money-making scheme, would come back when the bodies had decomposed, dig up the bones and sell them to the bone factory in Strines near the print work. Wow! So, come on, let's get digging. Okay. Today we're going down to the end of the lower portion of the Peak Forest Canal to Portland Basin which is at Duckinfield Junction and it's where the Ashton Canal meets the Peak Forest Canal and the Huddersfield Narrow Canal which goes up to uh, Huddersfield Marsden. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, during today's journey we're going to see five aqueducts, although most of them are little piddly things. There's, yeah. only, there's only one that's like quite a nipsy tingling one. <laughs> nipsy! Uh, two tunnels, one pretend tunnel and a lift bridge. And you'll notice that as we get up further away from Marple and the nice bit of the Peak Forest Canal, it does start to get a bit different. Yes, very. When they built the canal, they built three tunnels on this lower part. This was the third one called Rose Hill Tunnel. It was a hundred yards long. It used to have three names. It was called Rose Hill Tunnel. It was also called Aqueduct Tunnel. And it was also called Mancom Tunnel. <laughs> M-A-N-C-O-M-A-B. Manco. Manco. Oh, Manco. Manco Tunnel. 
And it was all all right until 1833, when the great Gaskill wood slip happened. Do you know how I remember Gaskill? Like Jill Gascoigne, she used to play Mackie Forbes on the Gentle Touch. Do you remember that? Yes. I it's, do. Weird. it's weird, isn't it, how you remember things sometimes? And they actually managed to repair it that time. But then a few years later, there was an even worse one. And the whole roof caved in. Even Nippy Nobby on his icebreaker Big Bertha couldn't get through. No, he couldn't, honestly. <laughs> Nippy Nobby. <laughs> Nippy Nobby on his big icebreaker. You think I'm making these things up? So they kind of gave up all hope. And because it was just so catastrophically damaged, that's the second big word I've got in this morning. It is. They decided to pull the roof off, not like in one go, like a tin of beans, but they dug it out and it turned from Rose Hill Tunnel to Rose Hill Cutting. That was Hyde, Hyde, it's because I keep meaning to say Hyde Park Corner. Hyde Bank Tunnel. Oh dear. And it survived, it's still there. Although the, that dangerous ledge right near the end, it nearly gets, takes your head off, doesn't it? Nearly. This used to be Oakwood Mill. It used to be a cotton spinning mill back in the 1800s when it was built. Uh, during the First World War, they adapted it to make margarine. Random, innit? It's a bit random. Random. I like a bit of stalk on the morning on me, <laughs> on me toast. I prefer butter though, don't you? A bit of lure pack. A bit of lure pack. Nowadays it's called the Romilly Board Mill. It sounds like, like an acting studio, it does, doesn't it? Doesn't it? <laughs> and if you were here, you can smell wet cardboard. And that's what they, well, they don't make wet cardboard. That's what you can smell. <laughs> I think that's part of the process, isn't it, of making cardboard? Yes. I much prefer the smell going past the Swizzle Sweet Factory than Romilly Board Mill. Yeah. Back in the mid 19th century, when the railways were just starting to take off, the workers from Manchester would escape the grimy, smoky streets and warehouses and come out for a day trip. They'd get on the train at Manchester and go up to Duckingfield, which is where we're going today, and they'd get on a packet boat which was waiting for them and they'd come up the Lower Peak Forest Canal, up the locks towards Marple, and then out to Macclesfield and enjoy the scenery and the unspoiled. Beautifulness. Beautifulness. Yeah, they'd go down to the Roman lakes and then hit the local inns and have a few bevies. Oh, sounds fun. You should have seen these. I mean, you probably have because you're old enough to remember them. I am. They were packed in like sardines, but they used to love it. And then when they'd finished, they'd go back down and get the train back to Manchester and get ready for another six days of hard graft. What's a packet boat? Well, they were called packet boats because originally, it's not, it's not an English term, originally there were boats that were used to send mail or people with messages. Packets? Yes, yeah, so like mail packets. This is Romilly. Romilly. In the news report called Romilly Weeks. <laughs> no idea. It's Romilly Weeks for ITV News. I think she sounds a bit more feminine than that though. <laughs> uh, this is Romilly Moorings, which we could moor at. There's a supermarket, it's an Aldi just across there. And just in front of us is Romilly Bridge. You remember me talking about the packet boats? Yes. Yeah, bringing the day trippers up from Manchester. Well, this used to be an important stop and there used to be uh, a pub on the northwest side of the bridge. 
and that's where they'd stop and get a bit of refreshment on the way. I wouldn't like to have been the conductor on one of them packet boats. Sounds like my kind of trip. I don't know, I wouldn't like a bit... <laughs> can you imagine working it with people like being a bit leery and being sick? Come here. Come here. Come here. Wait till this lady's passed. There we go. Oh, what you like? Wait. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. One of the most common questions we get asked is, does Otis ever jump in the water? No, he doesn't. He doesn't jump in on purpose. No. We've taught him not to, but he does slip. You've seen how precariously close he gets to the edge. And all it takes is a little distraction or reaching for a branch, just that little <laughs> bit too far. It does, yeah. And in he goes. And I think that was about the seventh time, seventh yeah. or eighth time. He's been in a few times. That he's fallen in. Normally, when it's really cold, where I would get undressed and we'd, I'd go and give him a quick warm shower, just rinse him off and warm him up. But today, it's glorious. It's, it's fine. 20 degrees, so uh, we're just gonna let him dry off in the sun <laughs> and maybe give him a rinse off later. was Woodley Tunnel. It's got a towpath running through it. It has. And Sean didn't like that because it makes the canal a little bit narrower. I had that much each side of the boat. Which means he has to concentrate a little bit more without <laughs> right. getting some scrapes on the boat. And that, the bridge just after it, carries a railway line. Have a guess where? Manchester. No, you know this place very well. You've been there. You used to drive there on your lorries all the time. Well, you remember, yeah. Where was the place that you mo went more often than not on your lorries? Sunny Scunny. Scunny. And <laughs> the railway line that crosses that viaduct there Scumport. takes thousands of tonnes of rubbish from Manchester and dumps it in a big gash just outside Scunny. <laughs> big hole in the ground and it takes thousands of tonnes of rubbish from Manchester. When we were on the upper Peak Forest Canal, we followed the River Goit down the Goit Valley. We shouldered the river. We did. All the way down to Marple, then the River Goit goes under the aqueduct and down towards Stockport. On the lower section, we're now in the Tame Valley, following the River Tame, which is on our left-hand side, our port side. And we'll go over it when we get to Duckingfield Junction. That's the nipsy twitchy tingling <laughs> aqueducts we've got to do. <laughs> Now, don't confuse this river tame with the one down uh, near the Coventry Canal. That's a different one. This one starts in Mrs. Mottershed's back garden in Saddleworth. <laughs> it does. It does. She's got a tap. She can turn it off when she don't want it. And the tame and the goit meet together in Stockport and do what? Form what? They form another river. The tame and the goit form in Stockport the River Mersey. Oh, do they? And that's where the Mersey starts and it goes down then and out into, well, towards Liverpool and the estuary and people take a ferry across it. <laughs> According to Jerry Marsden, anyway.
got sorry a... about the light. Uh, that's the bridge that carries the M67 over the canal, which they had to reroute into a bit of a bendy shape to accommodate the motorway. Back into civilization, eh? The really low railway bridge, bridge 1B or B1, I don't know, the bridge numbering system around here is a little bit woo! <laughs> uh, it's really low and it carries the old Hope Valley line between Manchester and Glossop. It's also where the trains could turn off and go up towards Marple. I want to go back to Marple. I do. Duckingfield Railway Bridge was built back in 1845 and it was the first ever railway bridge to be formed out of cast iron. Duckingfield Station used to be just to the right hand side of the bridge and the platforms used to extend out over the canal. Both the station and the platforms were demolished back in the 1960s but from the air you can still see where the station used to be on the big stone arches. Do you remember earlier on I was talking about the River Tame? Well here's where the canal crosses the river on the Duckingfield Aqueduct. It was one of the first parts of this canal to be built and the three sandstone arches carry the final few metres of the Peak Forest Canal over the River Tame and into our destination for today which is Portland Basin. Back in the days of the working boats this used to be the Ashton Canal Warehouse. Nowadays it's a museum and heritage centre and it celebrates the history of this once busy canal junction. Right then, where can we moor up? <laughs> well, we're here anyway. Uh, we, we're at Portland Basin, which is Duckingfield Junction. It's where three canals meet. Well, specifically two, because this is the Ashton Canal and we've just come off the Peak Forest Canal. But it's only a couple of hundred yards up that way that the Huddersfield Narrow Canal starts. Yes. And like I was saying earlier, 50 years ago, this would have all been deserted and abandoned. There was nothing here. It's thanks to the campaigners and volunteers over the years that these canals are open again. That behind us is Portland Basin Museum. It's closed at the moment. That's why, before you say, why didn't you go in the museum? <laughs> because the will. That's why. Anyway, uh, we hope you've enjoyed this vlog. And if you have, and you're not already, hit the subscribe button. And then hit the thumbs up. That one. And then obviously the notifications bell and YouTube will let you know when we release a new video. Do you know why it's good to hit the thumbs up? Why? Every, wherever you hit the thumbs up from on your body gets 10 years of good luck. Does it? So if you hit, if you like do 10 videos with each finger, that's, I don't know, 100 years of good luck. It could do, yeah. And then you could use your 10 toes and any other extremities that you can put on your keyboard, I think. What happens if they hit the thumbs down? Uh, oh, you turn ugly, you get warts and eternal diarrhea. <laughs> Good luck spelling <laughs> diarrhea in captions. <laughs> if you want to help support the channel, uh, you can click the join button and become a member. It's on our YouTube homepage or you can do it the old fashioned way. I say old fashioned. And that's uh, by joining Patreon. There is a link up above Sean said if you want to do that. It's just up there. It's getting breezy, isn't it? It is. I hope the muffs are alright on the microphone. Woo. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Ta da! Hello Good and welcome. Morning. Shall we do that again? Shall we? Yeah, let's start again, <laughs> shall we? One, why do you always laugh when I'm doing the countdown? Because it's funny. It's not funny at all. Three, two, one. We didn't film coming up because it nearly gave Sean an asthma attack didn't it? And I don't have asthma! And up until about 50 years ago, up until, there you go. Ta-da! Just standing in front of the camera. Hello! <laughs> it still didn't sound interesting, second time I said it. So it's like the, the, the finger, oh sorry we've been recognised again. Alright. <laughs> 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 you alright? <laughs> 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 on our port side, left hand side.
I always get that mix up. So don't write in and tell me, because I never read them anyway. <laughs> and this one starts up in Saddleworth. It does, in, under Doris. I've forgotten her name. On the lower portion. 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 Take nine. Hundred. Yeah, feels like it. That's it. That were interesting. No! Can't say that. Uh, we're actually just coming in to hide. Go in to hide. Ah. Echo! Echo! I've just said to Sean that I've got a bad feeling 